My name's Anthony Davis. If you Google Anthony Davis, the basketball player comes up. But if you go Anthony Davis, the comedian, basketball player comes right back up. So I'm just, <laughs> just crushing it. He doesn't even have a Facebook. You know how much that hurts when they start tagging me in that shit? ESPN LA tagged me like, we're so excited for Anthony Davis to come to the Lakers. I was like, I'm not good, but I'll do my best. You know what I mean? <laughs> the verified ESPN Twitter account, but when he was thinking about coming, we're like, we're so hope, we hope so much that Anthony Davis comes to LA. I was like, I'm already here. <laughs> I'm outside, let's go guys, you know? <laughs> oh God, I've never been to a strip club before. You're welcome, and because uh, my sister was a stripper, and uh, that pissed me off. Because why would I pay for something I could just see at home for free? And uh, yeah, no, no, it's you know it's funny because it's true, and um, that's not my only incest joke, guys. This was first one, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep it coming at you in the face like my dad used to, and that's two, that's two, that's two. I rub my belly whenever I do a good joke. <laughs> good boy. <laughs> I'm happily married. Uh, she's not, but I am. And uh, <laughs> well, wife's the most beautiful woman in the world because that's how I bought her. And uh, she's <laughs> she hates that joke, but the green card. <laughs> so. But she's, she's a nurse, okay? She likes to make fun of me all the time. Like the other day, she's like, Anthony, you know you talk like you own FarmersOnly.com? Fuck you, okay? That was, that hurt a lot. You know, I saw you smile at that. You're a horrible person. And she said I had, I look like I have two fours Whitaker eyes. That hurt a lot. Don't laugh that hard, asshole, okay? <laughs> Looking right at you. Well, the worst thing that you ever did, <laughs> right? A bunch of you are like, I get that now, okay? He's got funny eyes, okay. The worst thing she ever told me, she's like, Anthony, because you're white, you're more susceptible to strokes. And I was like, well, bitch, good morning to you, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got to give somebody pancakes. You know what I mean? You guys know what bad news pancakes are? I get a lot of bad news pancakes, okay? <laughs> like, here's some pancakes. Your dad's dead, okay? <laughs> That's how I found out. And um, he's not really dead. He's just dead to me. Uh, so... <laughs> Y'all are on board with the incest, but me and my dad have a rocky relationship, okay? That's too far, okay. <laughs> Fuck y'all, all right. <laughs> Which is like, you know, Anthony, we're about to have a stroke. You smell toast. Fun fact for you, it's a medical fact for everybody in here. That's not fucking true, okay? You don't smell anything when you have a stroke. You just have a stroke, okay? You know how I know? I asked my best friend who had a stroke. <laughs> I was just like, hey, Ben, did you see the Patriots last night? He's like, yeah. Well, actually, he's like, yeah. And um, <laughs> it's accurate. It's accurate. I was like, hey, bud, you remember that time you had a stroke? He's like, little bit, little bit. <laughs> I was like, hey, Ben, do you remember what you smelled at all? He's like, no, I was too busy stroking the fuck out. <laughs> you know what? You can't be like, is that lavender? Oh, shit, it's going to be a bad one today. <laughs> That's pumpernickel. Oh, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, she's ruining breakfast for me now. You know, I'm just sitting at work. Somebody starts making breakfast. I'm like, you guys smell toast? <laughs> They'll fire you for that, okay? Especially when you're a school teacher. And um, <laughs> but it got so bad, I went to a doctor. I went actually to an actual doctor. I was like, hey man, I'm smelling toast a lot. He looked at me. He's like, you've been making breakfast a lot. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Stop making breakfast, fat ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cured. You know. <laughs> I was like, no, man, I think I'm having strokes, like with an S, like I'm just having strokes every single day. He's like, I wouldn't worry about strokes, buddy. Diabetes is gonna get you long before a stroke will. <laughs> and he high fives my wife and <laughs> she's like, it's cause you're fat. <laughs> I love that bitch so much, right? <laughs> I'll kill her, I swear to God, right? <laughs> That's murder. That's murder. Okay. You're going to prison with me, pretty boy. All right. I hate how pretty you are. It hurts me deeply. I bet when you look down, you can see your dick. That must be nice. <laughs> I try to be like a, a, I'm a smart person. I've always been smart. I come from a real bad neighborhood. And I've always been a smart kid. Like uh, the day I tried to join the gang, it was, uh, it was rough. 
because they know people love me. You know what I mean? Everybody think gangs are easy. It's not easy getting a gang. You gotta prove to them that nobody cares about you and you fucking stupid. <laughs> you gotta prove to them that you, you gotta do something stupid. You be like, okay, he did that. I'm gonna do something really stupid. <laughs> I'm gonna steal in front of this camera watch. So uh, I, I went to join the gang and they had discrepancies with me joining the gang because in my neighborhood when somebody gets shot, me and my grandma would go out there and we would do the prayer circle. So they saw me in my church clothes praying. They was like, man, we saw a dude in his church clothes. He is not ready to be a killer on these streets. Me being a church kid was like, excuse me, sir. Yes, I am. I'm real out here, sir. So they doing thug shit. Thug shit. They had to collect money from a crackhead. Right? And nobody could knock this crackhead out. Everybody had tried from my little kid gang group that I was in. This is my first day in there, right? For me, I use common sense. I don't want to try to punch a crackhead and get no crackhead juice on my hands. <laughs> so I hit him with a garbage can from a distance. I ain't tell nobody. Like, it's your turn. Like, uh, garbage can. Ah. They thought that shit was Jesus. Like, damn! He fell all out of the shit. Like, damn, you crazy. But I, I was mad I heard him because I went over there like, oh man, but I was, they, they looked like I was gonna do more. I was like, you good, man, you good. But they're like, damn it. And then when he hit him with the cracker, the garbage can, he went over there to whoop his ass and I was like, yeah, yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> so I go to the first gang meeting. And uh, you know, they line everybody up and they want you to show your loyalty to the block, you know? And they say, you know, that's 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 Michi right there. He got heart. I, I, I saw him hit a crackhead in the head with a garbage can. Is that right, little gangster? I was like, hell yeah. You ready to be a gangster? Hell yeah. You gonna die for this block? I was like, ooh. Not this block in particular. Uh, the resale value is atrocious. All these abandoned lots. They said never invest on in a block with two abandoned buildings. And it's three. Ah. Uh, Suggest y'all move the gang downtown. That's what I came here for. I want y'all to think about what you're dying for. It really makes sense. I went on a racist story because I know you guys are like, what's her journey? And I will tell you. Um, I was in this grocery store and uh, this little white girl was <laughs> by herself in an aisle and she was stealing and eating cho like chocolate and candy and shit, opening packages, biting it, throwing it on the floor, dancing, no music. Just stealing and dancing, you get what I'm saying? And I saw her and I was like, I fuck with this little white girl, I gotta go dance with her. You know what I mean? So I'm behind her and I'm dancing with this little white girl and I'm like, still the Twix, still the Twix, because I'm trying to support her, you know? I'm trying to mentor her. So I'm like, still the Twix. And uh, this big white guy in the suit sees us. Uh, I think it's her dad, if it's not her dad, this is a sad story. But a big white guy in the suit sees us and he like runs down the aisle and he like snatches her away from me and I was like, you know, sorry sir, whatever. And he was like, don't talk to this, don't even look at this nigger. Hard R, yeah. On a Tuesday. Y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Early week shit. You get what I'm saying? And that's not really a thing, but I want to spread that black people really hate racism on Tuesday. So y'all can spread it. I was like, sir, on a Tuesday! You know, I was... <laughs> I'm trying to start something. Come on. And so, I was like, sir, on a Tuesday. He was like, yeah, what? 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 Yeah, get out of here. No. And I was like, no, no, no. I got to change this guy's mind. I got to change the world. I got to be prolific. Um, but I couldn't think fast enough, you know? So I just looked at his daughter and I was like, Black guys are made out of chocolate. I ran away. <laughs> Saved the life. Bye, guys. They gave me a gun and an eight ball. First day. Ooh, shit. <laughs> Y'all know I just started. Y'all ain't got nothing for the new people? Y'all gonna give me a gun and an eight ball now? Like, y'all trying to set me up, motherfucker? So I'm selling my drugs. I'm selling my drugs, man. I'm a good drug dealer. No, because I was excited about it. They got drug dealer songs. I don't know if y'all ever sold drugs here. And all right, people act like y'all don't sell fucking drugs. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When you start selling drugs, you feel so empowered. I don't give a fuck if you got five pills. I don't give a fuck if you just sell a little eight ball, whatever it is. You be like, you know what? I'm going to get this eight ball. I'm going to flip that by two kilos, <laughs> a machine gun, and shoot all my friends up. I'm taking a block over. I should move to Mexico on the ass, get the shit direct from the connect, but... <laughs> I don't speak Spanish right now, but if I did, <laughs> I was too excited. They had a song called Pocket Full of Stones out way back then. I would 
be in the mirror with my drugs, like playing. I got a pocket full of stones. I'll be doing my deals and shit. What? Happy as hell. <laughs> I was so excited, I woke up the next morning early as fuck. Six o'clock before everybody was up, because it was my first day on the job. I was happy as hell. I'm out there on the corner marketing and advertising like a motherfucker to sell my drugs. Ready Rocks, Ready Rocks. Get your Ready Rocks here. Boulders for your shoulders. Biggest rocks on the block. Hey, sir, how you doing? Did you get your rock today? All right, huh? I'll see you about your son a new coat. You know, I'll take a coat if you want it. All right, I got these ready rocks. Sold the shit out of my rocks, though. Bought me a brand new pullover coat. I come in the house with a new coat on. My grandma got all the lights on and church music playing. I'm on the battlefield. She walked by, I walked by her. She said, hey, hey, where you get that coat from? And I was already in the gang for two days. I sold rocks. I said, hey, mind your business. She snatched the coat from the bottom. Wow, my arms went up. I had an extra little stash of the little money in the coat pocket. I'm thinking she'd never find it because it's a secret zip compartment. She didn't check the pockets. She just felt for a lump, found the lump, took some big scissors, cut the coat in half, cut the drugs and the money up and flushed it down the toilet and caught the Holy Ghost. I'm saving you from the streets. I'm saving you from the streets. We were safe, but uh, you just cut up killer T money. And they told me if something happened to their drugs or their money, they gonna murder somebody. They gonna beat the fuck out of somebody. And you always told me to tell the truth, so I'm gonna tell them what you did. I'm gonna tell them you cut the drugs and the money up. It's on you. This is my first day on the job. I just started there. I tried not to get in, but I got a gun and an eight ball. So I went to bed that night. Like I'm gonna have to bust my grandma's shit with a garbage can. I'm gonna have to bust her. She better. She better not snitch on me neither. She better take that. The next morning, uh, we go to the bank to get the money out. And I was like, oh shit, my grandma's scared, hell no, what? We go to the bank, and then we go to the block. The block is full of, just like this, it's full of different type of people, dirty pit bulls and babies and crackheads and full grown teenage thugs, it's crazy. So I'm thinking she's gonna be scared, cause I was scared a little bit, cause I didn't know who was gonna whip my ass. I didn't know what the fuck was gonna happen, you know what I mean? So she pulled up on the block and she, uh, you know, aggressively get out of the car and say, hey, which one are you work for? I immediately start tearing up and crying because I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you right there. I got to walk now to the, through the thugs to Killer T who let me in the game and hand him a note my grandma had wrote and pinned in my pocket. Uh, uh. My grandma had said, uh, I can't be in the gang no more. <laughs> he gonna read the note. My grandson is covered in the blood of Jesus. I don't care about much anymore, to be honest with you. I really don't. There's not much I care about. Dude, I'll ask a homeless guy for change. I don't care, I know he's got it. That seems like a perfect person to ask. You can't spare a quarter, you have a cup full of them. You ever see a homeless guy with the perfectly written I'm homeless sign and car? You ever see that? That's sketchy, you're not getting my change. I wanna give to my change to the guy who looks like he wrote a sign in an earthquake. That guy needs my help. But I made a rule for myself. I will not give change to homeless people who are holding I'm homeless signs on street corners anymore. I will not do it. Not because I'm a bad guy. But for the simple fact, you can actually get a paycheck in this country for holding signs on street corners. I think that's the job title, sign holder. Why didn't, I don't understand why you haven't figured this out yet. This is what you are best at. This is your dream job and your hobby all rolled into one. You, I don't, this is right up your alley, sir. Literally, right up the alley that you live in. <laughs> tell me you wouldn't rock that interview, by the way. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about your hobbies? <laughs> like, oh, it's actually sign holding, that's my hobby. I do, I work at a restaurant, and, uh, and it's fine, but sometimes people say really stupid things to my face. And uh, I was at work the other day, and this guy said, Hey, you're pretty. You should be a model, not a waitress. And I was like, Yeah, it was a choice between the two. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I made a mistake. Um, I don't get bent up about it, actually. In the past couple of years, I've realized like family is the most important thing to me. Because uh, a couple of years ago, my dad passed away, but don't get sad, my dad, he was 89, so he was really starting to get gross. <laughs> uh, uh, 
<laughs> Actually, when my brother called me and told me my dad was in the hospital, I wasn't even shocked. I was just like, oh my god, this is so unfair that he voted for Trump and now he doesn't even have to live through it. <laughs> My dad and I, as, as we both got older, he became very obsessed with me uh, finding a boyfriend. So everywhere we went, he would try to match me up with people. Like one time we went to a gas station. And <laughs> you see where this is going? And I got out of the car and I pumped gas and I got back in the car and my dad goes, Gene, there was a man there. <laughs> who was looking at you. <laughs> and I was like, no, there wasn't. Yes, there was. You just don't notice because you have your nose in the air. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm sorry, Dad, that I walked into a gas station without looking to get laid. <laughs> Next time I go in, I'll be sure to make an announcement and say, hey, everybody, I'm just here to fill up, but if anyone would like to fill me up, I'll just be outside with my dad. <laughs> He was like, well, that would be a start. <laughs> <laughs>